Good afternoon, or good morning, whatever it is, whatever time it is. I'm pleased to be here with you and uh, looking forward to having a conversation. Um, I, I know you've had a chance, I hope, to look at the single page uh, handout that was uh, uh, distributed about the sustainability strategic plan. Um, I'm going to talk, I've got a brief presentation, um, but I'm really hoping that you will uh, ask questions and uh, we can have a discussion about sustainability. Um, I've been with K-State since 1982 as a state extension specialist and director of engineering extension for the last four years. Did a lot of sustain, I've done, I'm an architect by my training and background. Um, I'm really an adult educator, educator that uh, thrives on um, public and adult training and technical assistance. I don't have any classroom responsibilities. All my work is uh, uh, related to training and technical assistance, uh, primarily in the areas of radon and indoor air quality and energy. Uh, been working in radon for 25, 26 years and uh, training people who learned how to test and fix homes and buildings for radon, public outreach and assistance. And 80% uh, of my salary comes from grants and contracts that we bring into engineering extension. So uh, my sustainability work has been related to two primary areas. Um, I served on the Manhattan City Commission uh, from 1995 to 2011 and was mayor four times during that period and tried to move sustainability forward on, uh, on our planning documents and in uh, other policy areas. And then have been associated, as Lisa indicated, with various sustainability uh, projects and planning efforts uh, over my time here at Kansas State University, working with Lisa and others, um, specifically on planning efforts to try and bring sustainability policy uh, into the university. Um, uh, was associated with the stewardship subcommittee and then a sustainability planning effort and most recently uh, the sustainability strategic planning committee um, uh, uh, at the request of the provost. So that, that tells you a little bit more about my uh, background and uh, uh, history and let me just give you the brief overview here. The committee charged to uh, uh, the, for sustainability strategic plan which was uh, a, com a, a common element in uh, 2025 was to, again, develop a recommended action plan uh, within the context of research, curriculum, student life operations, engagement, and building off uh, the work that was done. I'm, I'm a firm believer that you don't uh, put stuff on the shelf and forget about it. If I know about it, we're going to look at it first before we do a new round of planning because there must be lessons learned from the past. So the goal was to provide key directions uh, and goals, activities, that can be identified, um, expected outcomes in the context of K-State 2025, and identify resources needed. Here's an, a list of the committee members uh, that uh, Melody LeHue, who uh, couldn't be here today to share this with me, with you, uh, but Ben Champion was a, a key person. Uh, those of you that have been here uh, know Ben Champion was the Director of Sustainability left last uh, May and is uh, now down in Arizona. Um, and has not been replaced yet, uh, unfortunately. That's, uh, so there's been a, a drop off in uh, sustainability efforts uh, and awareness on campus because if there's not someone working full time on that, um, it, it just, it fades. But there are others that, that uh, contributed significantly to the development of the plan. Here's the kind of sequence we went through. Um, we began uh, last hmm, September of 2013 and carried work all the way through until May of 2014 with the draft plan being released to the university community for review um, in May and continuing until it was uh, posted uh, in August. And so that's kind of a, a quick timeline. We looked at the, the STARS framework uh, as a means to organize, organize us. Um, and so you can see what we, kind of the, the sequence of planning. We used the American Association for Sustainability and Higher Education uh, uh, indicators uh, program of STARS as a kind of a framework because it would allow us to bench, benchmark against peers uh, the kinds of things that are going on at K-State and would help us identify gaps for planning and priority setting and gives us criteria that can be translated into goals and outcomes. I won't go through all the detail, you can't see it, but it, it lays out these, the, the STARS area, general organization and the, the areas uh, of academics, engagement, and operations, um, the structure of um, the 
the indicators and the areas where assessment of a, a, a university's sustainability status uh, can be depicted. And we felt this was, because it was recognized and available, was the best way to start versus trying to create something new. We could always adapt it for our own use. There's more in terms of operations, grounds, purchasing, transportation, waste, water, content areas that I know you're, uh, you may be dealing with in your projects for the NRES uh, class. And then planning and administration is the fourth area, um, looking at kind of the leadership aspects uh, that are important for a university to make progress in sustainability. Uh, I won't explain because I honestly don't remember all the details of, of the, the measurements, criteria, and points, but this, this lays out how the, the points are awarded for uh, uh, your, the university's performance in various areas. Um, and uh, there are pros and cons to any rating uh, or sustainability rating structure, but this is what we uh, began with and felt was, was reasonably well-founded. So it was a general organizational framework to help us put uh, ourselves into working groups that could then choose emphasis and look at these categories and stars and say, you know, this makes sense for K-State. We definitely have to have this as part of our plan um, and then developing goals from that. The overall goal of the strategic plan, which is posted on the, the provost's website under the 2025 plan uh, webpage area, is that sustainability will be clearly evident as a core commitment and common element throughout K-State and in service of its land-grant mission of education, research, and service. Assumption is that the primary contribution of the sustainable movement in society and higher education has been to incorporate environmental performance into institutional goals and processes. The 2025 goals reflect the need to focus on institutionalizing environmental performance as core features, but also strive to build connection and interdependence between environmental, social, economic programs, initiatives, and performance towards a more inclusive actualization of sustainability. So we have four areas uh, in, the, in the plan, and in academics, the overarching goal um, was to enable and empower participants and stakeholders to respond to sustainability challenges as ethical actors, leaders, consistent with the academic and civic land-grant missions. We'll achieve that through interdisciplinary programs, through infusion of sustainability challenges into existing programs, encouraging diverse learning communities around these grand sustainability challenges, and to look at engaged research and education that feature partnerships reflecting the land-grant mission. Lots of words, and they are pretty potent words, honestly, uh, in terms of what is implied uh, for the university. The university should become a learning laboratory where housing units, organizational units, um, try and implement through experimentation uh, ways to try and solve these grand sustainability challenges. Those of you that are familiar with the College of Agriculture and its five grand challenges um, in its 2025 plan, those I think do a nice job of identifying many of the issues related to long-term sustainability. And it is these long-term adaptation and survival and climate change challenges that I think are the essence of sustainability. And that's what this attempts to say is we have to become more of a problem-solving institution and focus on these grand challenges um, in terms of our student work, in terms of our engagement and outreach, and in terms of uh, academics and research. For academics, the science and scholarship uh, should be a core emphasis at K-State of sustainability. We want to have sufficient courses in place to enable all students to have exposure to sustainability principles and issues. We want to have a, an internationally and nationally recognized center, uh, which we, the acronym we used was CASC. Uh, we also like IASC as an acronym, Institute for the Advancement of Sustainability Knowledge. We feel that uh, creating a center, although it's not easily done in a, in a university setting, especially these days, was important as a demonstration of a commitment. And then administrative support to identify and expand strategic areas of academic and, and research emphasis in sustainability. Um, that's not, that's it's easily written and easily said, but not easily done. And I guess the, the challenge that uh, comes to mind about this is when I, this is a number of years ago, I was dealing, talking to a then Dean of Agriculture, and we were talking about how to look at sustainable agriculture and movement towards that. And he says, you know, 
It's not easy to take a wheat geneticist who has tenure and turn them into a sustainable agricultural agriculture expert. And that captures some of the institutional challenges we face. Um, uh, these, uh, it, sustainability can, can, can be, uh, I think, reflected in, in anyone's research, but um, it is getting these kinds of changes uh, in, in the academic realms of the institution are a real challenge. In engagement, the goal was infuse sustainability into our engagement activities and to help create communities, support, and activity for sustainability that drive progress towards the integration of goals throughout the institution. Engagement-oriented learning is problem-solving learning, um, real-world context learning, um, working uh, with people to try and help them address sustainability challenges and questions that they face. And so that's what the, the content, uh, the goal was there. Um, the, the outcomes we hoped for in, in the engagement area was that K-State would become known for its sustainable focus by all future students and identified as uh, addressing these grand sustainability challenges. That a network of faculty collaboration on research and instruction would be, uh, would be developed and grown. That we would work with other uh, partners, K-State partners, athletics, alumni, foundation, to help engage students, faculty, staff, and alumni around their sustainability goals, and that the public would come to know us as a place that places a high priority on sustainability, and um, we've got increased faculty and staff participating in these types of projects. Operations is a, a, a huge area for the university, and uh, it, it, it's a small community that runs here at K-State in the midst of Manhattan as a larger community, and there's lots that can be done to take advantage of the day-to-day -day operations to try and demonstrate and advance uh, issues and concerns related to sustainability. So the goal was to um, respond to these challenges in the way we operate the infrastructure by putting innovative solutions into practice, modeling economics, environment, and social bo triple bottom line decision making in the management of campus infrastructure and activities. And the living laboratory uh, is reiterated there in terms of uh, trying to bring the bridge the academic mission of the university, teaching and research, with facilities and infrastructure management to try and create this kind of transformational knowledge. That's, not an, that's another tough one to accomplish in a university setting because many times these operations and the people that run the dorms and the buildings and maintain and do the recycling are hard to connect to the academic realms and the academic calendar. But uh, there's great resources here at K-State in the faculty, staff, and students. And if we can find ways to connect the ideas and, and concepts they have that relate to sustainability um, and connect those to the operational challenges in these next sections, that, that was the, the vision for, the, for the, the plan here. So in buildings, energy, and water, the, the highlights were targeted goals to decrease energy and water use and improve building user satisfaction. Um, to involve students, faculty, and staff in research and pilot scale projects uh, in these uh, buildings, energy, and water to try and improve efficiency, increase use of renewable energy, or, and uh, or other sustainability infrastructure issues. Grounds and water. Um, minimize uh, water use uh, and replace landscapes with uh, more resilient landscaping and increase uh, the acceptance and celebration of native and resilient landscapes by our occupants and, and uh, community members. Transportation, um, emphasize growth in public transit, bike, bikeability, walkability, um, reductions in parking, in public access to parking, reorganize parking services into a campus, transportation planning department aligned with facilities. Purchasing and, and dining, um, major material flows, uh, and the idea is can we find ways to minimize waste and maximize the useful life of the material resources we utilize? Another major uh, goal for operations was to develop a university climate action plan, which would increase climate awareness and leadership uh, in various programs. Fourth area is administration. And the goal here is to exemplify governance according to triple bottom line priorities, utilizing open and shared mechanisms to ensure the voice uh, in uni university decision making reflects economic, social, ecological interdependencies through sustainability science. To foster leadership and ensure programs and departments are active partners in accomplishing these goals. 
easily said, not easily accomplished, uh, but it does take leadership. And we tried to recognize in this section the importance of the commitment of uh, our president, our provost, our deans, our department heads, and uh, uh, the other vice presidents in implementing this program. Um, the goal here, the ideal outcomes were to have um, 2025 plans reflect these goals and outcomes, um, to improve our STARS or other rating scores um, it's at least uh, every two years and try and achieve a silver level. We wanted to increase the Office of Sustainability's capacity, the establishment of a President's Commission or Committee on Sustainability, and talk about funding for strategic initiatives. I wish I could say those have been accomplished, but they haven't. So that's a quick review and overview of the plan and what's in it. Um, and I've, I brought the plan along with me if there's any questions that come up, and I also have the letter from the provost about um, what's coming next. Um, president, provost will work with the vice presidents uh, filling sustainability leadership uh, uh, due to Ben's departure um, and the creation of Presidential Commission on Sustainability, and um, those haven't happened yet. So um, that's what we would like to see because without people involved, at least part-time or full-time, um, to promote and engage and uh, work with leadership, it's tough to get things done. So that's, that's a quick review. Uh, hopefully it wasn't uh, too redundant and, and straightforward. Uh, questions, comments? Feedback. Yes, sir. You were talking about the climate change action plan. Now, I'm wondering, is that just more just trying to get a general education towards everybody about the effects of climate change or just trying to get the university as a whole trying to mitigate their effects by climate change? The latter. The goal, the idea would be to um, look specifically at the key dimensions of climate change and say how here at the university in the structure that we just reviewed can, uh, what should be our goals. Um, and we all know that uh, we're going to have to adapt to climate change impacts over the, in the rest of this century. Um, we're going to, we're going to have some irreversible effects. Uh, we're going to have some things that we might be able to slow uh, and hopefully stop. But there are some things that are just gonna happen to our environment and to us that we have to adapt to. And the university should be a learning community and a research and experimentation community to try and address these challenges. Because you folks, when you go out into the, to the working world uh, of business and uh, agencies and institutions, sustainability challenges are going to be there. Uh, and experience and knowledge and, in addressing these challenges are what employers are, uh, certainly some employers are going to be looking for. Uh, because they're, if they have a vision beyond one or two years in terms of their bottom line, they're going to recognize the conditions they're going to face and they'll need help with uh, adapting their company's goals and strategies uh, to, to the kind of changes that we're going to see. Um, so it, it's, that is just an area we couldn't, we certainly couldn't address that. Uh, we just identified, you know, in any plan there's always subsequent work that needs to be done, additional research, additional projects, et cetera, and that was one that we felt was important to emphasize given the, the status of um, uh, climate change information and climate science. Yes, sir. Uh, do you think uh, money has, is like one of the biggest challenges to uh, reaching these goals? Resources are a challenge. Uh, certainly, I, I think you're all probably familiar with the kind of resource challenges the state of Kansas faces right now, and that uh, the reduction, uh, either the level or uh, of reduction or the, the, the in funding for higher education uh, is, a cha is part of the, the difficulty. Um, you have to pay people to do work. Uh, and you, you have to pay a director of sustainability if you want sustainability to be advanced. And the kind of content that you see here and the goals and outcomes desired are 
kept in, in, in front of people um, as they do their work and as they do their planning. But yeah, resources are an issue uh, because the, I mean, each unit of the university faces reductions in funds in a variety of ways. Um, I, I, uh, we don't have funding from the uh, research and extension, but extension's been just hammered with cuts over the last eight to 10 years. That's the part that's supposed to carry the university to the people through county extension agents, through 4-H programs, through ag and, and uh, uh, biological sciences and all those, that kind of stuff. And if you reduce staff, you don't have a number, the number of people engaging with the public on that and trying to provide that assistance. So, yeah, resources are a problem. Um, and, it, and it's financial resources, certainly, if you're going to pay people. And it's um, priorities um, so that the, if the leadership of the, of the university needs to say this is a priority and you need to devote time to it. And that, that was certainly one of the things that we talked about a lot is and it kind of goes back to my comment about wheat geneticists and sustainable ag. Faculty members have to be evaluated and judged uh, on things. If they're going to, to make it progress in sustainability initiatives like described here, they have to be judged and given and recognized for work accomplished in that area. You've all probably heard Parrish or Publish about uh, being achieving tenure at a, at a university setting. You have to publish so many things. You have to go through a gauntlet to achieve tenure. And um, if the criteria for that doesn't reflect these kinds of goals and, and engagement activities and so on, if they don't get recognition for that, um, they're not going to be inclined to take that challenge up and try and accomplish it. So it's not just resources. It's, it's uh, priorities and um, criteria for evaluation. If, if we want faculty members to lead you in learning that addresses these sustainability challenges, they have to be recognized for efforts to do that. Uh, and that it also takes resources to do that. If you're going to pull people together in new ways, you have to infuse that with t people's time and or dollars to get that done. And, and I'd welcome your thoughts and comments on, on those. I mean, I'm, I'm just spewing right now. Uh, it's kind of stream of consciousness, um, but it, it reflects my involvement in sustainability over the years. I don't have tenure. I've been here for 32 years. I'm not a tenure uh, faculty member, I've, and that's just been the way it is for me. It's worked well for me. Um, uh, I don't have to go through those hoops. I have to generate income, revenue, and grants and contracts to pay my salary and those of my staff. So. Um, I'm a little bit different animal, um, but I heard from many faculty members on our task force, if we're going to, if you're going to ask us to do this, you have to recognize uh, the value of that work in, in advancement and, and uh, uh, promotion decisions. And it's probably similar for students who are in a class. If, mm -hmm. if they're not being evaluated on a topic, it's going to be an area that pay some attention to, but not really devote your full time attention. Yeah. One of the related um, challenges was just the structure of the university, and that's part of what you're talking about, mm -hmm. the overall structure that yeah. we got talked about. Yeah, the, these are things that um, faculty members uh, live and work in every day, and they're kind of they know about them, but they're not explicit. And that's a lot of what we tried to do is let's make explicit these, the, where the key administrative leadership actions might need to focus. Um, if we're going to have collaboration, if we're going to have interdisciplinary uh, research and engagement, if we're going to have a center, there has to be a leadership recognition of that and, and reinforcement for it. And uh, I think that's easier said than done. Um, in the context of all the things that the leadership of the university deal with. There are, however, what, there's eight common elements? I think eight common elements, sustainability is one, so that gives you a sense. But sustainability uh, is, it just underlies, <laughs> I mean, it, for me, it underlies the, the concerns uh, and the approach you bring to problem solving. 
Uh, and that, for me, was important in, in, in an, being an elected official. As a city commissioner, I felt one of my prime responsibilities was, I gotta look long term for our community. That's a, to me, it's just a, a, a prime responsibility because a lot of people don't think long term. They think short term. They think this tomorrow, this week, this month, this year. Cities go on and on and on. Universities go on and on and on. And people who make decisions about their direction and, and uh, development have to think long term. Um, because we're all, we're, we're in the stream of a community at the, and a university, and then we move on and, and into other areas, but that place goes on and on. And if we're not thinking long term in sustaining our communities, our universities, our institutions, then we're missing the boat. And I'll tell you right now, there's, a, there's just a plethora of short term thinking um, in a lot of the leadership that uh, exists in um, a number of um, government levels um, versus the long term approach. Yeah. Have you received a lot of negative feedback for this plan with people being short term thinkers and not seeing this as a immediate problem? <coughs> Excuse me. No, I would say we did not receive a lot of negative feedback. Um, the first round of planning efforts, the sustainability task force report that um, uh, Ben and, and uh, Barbara Anderson and I co-chaired and, and, and developed, we did receive quite a bit of, of feedback and kind of opposition. Um, this round, well, there was less of that. There were certainly um, folks that, uh, faculty members that kind of commented on some of the things that I talked about of the challenge of getting this done, that you're, you're asking us to do more than we can do. We're being asked to do this and this and this and this, and now something else is gonna, it's, it's difficult to do that. So I would say there was a, there were certainly criticisms that came from a sense of the practicality of being able to do the things that are in the plan in, in some realms, especially in academic realms. But we did, we did not get uh, overwhelming response to the, the plan. We got feedback, we certainly got some feedback. Um, and we responded to all of that, tried to incorporate any, any changes we could, but th there wasn't a ton of negative feedback. So. Yes, sir. Bruce, you mentioned the, the STARS um, system as a framework for planning, also as, a, as one of many ranking systems. Uh, I think STARS is more specific about higher education. How does K-State compare to other universities? Um, I don't know, Lisa, if you, if you have a, a memory of, of kind of where we rank, we have not gone through a full on STARS um, rating uh, as, of, as I recall. We, we did not do that. Ben certainly looked at various areas, um, uh, but K-State, well, I, I won't say K-State was a leader. Um, it certainly had some good areas, but there are areas where we, we had virtually nothing at all, um, as I think back. But Lisa. Uh, we haven't, haven't done STARS. I have seen in the past um, other ratings of campus as maybe getting a C among universities. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, there's, yeah there are other, other types of rating and, and comparisons and, that have been done by independent groups. And yeah, we're, we, we don't rank up at the top, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, always on the right trend. So let me ask you a question. Have you seen in, in, in your fields of study, in the realms that you think you might go and work in, have you seen um, the issues of sustainability and climate change um, evident as concerns? Are they reflected in engineering and ag and you know, what, what? I'm just curious as to, to what you see uh, in, in, as you look to where you are and where you want to be and how, how it's reflected in sustainability, climate change, those, those kind of long-term concerns are reflected. Probably would have been better if we sent this question out ahead of time, but 
I'd like well, to. Some of them have had class from me, and I know they've heard about it. As I look back on my own work, uh, I've been involved in energy efficiency in buildings, renewable energy integration in buildings. I'm, a, I'm an old solar dog, so to speak, built passive solar homes in the 70s and, and early 80s. And, you know, for, to me, renewable energy um, is where it's certainly a, a key aspect of, of adaptation and, uh, and minimizing climate change. And a transition to a renewable energy based society and economy is where we need to go. I think that presents, that area, that realm presents real opportunity um, uh, for uh, anyone. Um, and, but the progress we make there is, it depends on national leadership to a great extent. With the Obama administration, renewable energy and energy has been a prime focus and uh, they've invested millions of dollars in um, solar and efficiency and geothermal and other air realms and business as well to try and advance that. Um, so it, it does make a difference who's, who's in charge. Um, and, you know, in Kansas, we've seen for a while we were just ab abysmally behind even though we are in, well endowed with natural energy resources of wind and biomass and solar in addition to having fossil fuels resources in natural gas and oil. Um, but it, I, we were talking in the 90s about what Kansas could be. And it, it wasn't until really 2005, 2006, in, in that time frame until Kansas started to wake up. And the utilities here took advantage, started to, to recognize the value of renewables um, and implement it. And it takes policy decisions at the state level to guide that. Like, renewable energy standards, certain percentages of energy taken from that. So there's been some progress in Kansas, um, but there's always people that want to slide back. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's unfortunate because we really could be um, uh, an even better demonstration for renewable energy uh, and, and integration into a, a state's economy. How are we doing on time, okay? Other questions, comments, thoughts? Anybody want to work for the sustainability director if we hire one? <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Um, I know we talked about um, money being a big obstacle and organizational structure. But also, would it just be the average attitude of the people that it doesn't matter of getting an education and trying to convince somebody that they're actually in the necessity for increasing sustainability? Yeah, sure. There's no question that um, we deal with uh, long standing attitudes or perceptions that. Um, are difficult to change. I mean, climate, climate change is the essence of a sustainability challenge. Um, and it, as I'm sure you know, just from following popular media, there are people that don't believe we have a gnat's ass effect on climate as humans. Um, to me, that's just denying an overwhelming amount of evidence. Um, intuitively as well as scientifically. Uh, so it, that's, that's just part of it. And whoever has, a, has obtained a leadership responsibility uh, or capacity can affect that. Um, if you have the head 
the chair of the uh, House of Representatives Energy and Science Committee, or the Senate's Energy and Science Committee, thinking that climate change is a hoax, it's a problem. It's a problem. Uh, and th that's why it's, <laughs> it's so important for people that want to think and look long term and are open to the value and benefit of science, albeit imperfect, uh, to be engaged in leadership. Uh, I, I just, it, it, it's just so important that people are willing to step up and run for office uh, and serve at whatever level you feel comfortable and in the capacity and capability to do that because if we abdicate our responsibilities to others, we get what we either vote or don't vote for. And we're living with that right now in Kansas. We're experiencing that right now in Kansas. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's just so important that um, we, we bring long-term perspectives to the table. Um, and, and, you know, I guess it, changing attitudes is, is what you started with as a question. And it... <laughs> It's kind of like, I remember a cartoon that comes to mind. I wish I could show it. it it's a political cartoon, and, and it says, geez, what if we did renewable energy and energy efficiency and resource conservation and, and uh, uh, just a whole bunch of things that intuitively, when you ask the public about these things, they say, yeah, those are good things. What if we did it and it all wasn't necessary? Well, life would be better. <laughs> the, qualities would imp the quality of things would improve. Uh, it would be good regardless of whether it made a difference long term or not. I firmly believe that it does, but you know, it's just like these people get it. You ask people about solar energy and they think, yeah, they experience it viscerally. You can feel that. And, and so it makes sense to take advantage of that. And we need people to advocate for that. Uh, and, and Advocated at, adv advocate for it at, at all levels. Um, it, it takes leadership. And uh, there, you know, it's just, it's disappointing to see the perspectives that are brought about science um, by some of our leaders today. Uh, and, and it's kind of denying, denying science. It's just, it's going to hurt us. It's going to delay our response our ability to adapt to the challenges we face. You didn't know you were going to get a political lecture today, did you? Yeah. But yeah, going along with that, Bruce, I mean, it's just his attitudes, and then there's kind of a person's training and what they're used to doing. Mm -hmm. um, we saw a video earlier this semester by Trisha Moore and Biomag Engineering. She was talking about ecosystem goods and services, and then Lisa's talk. And with, with Dr. Moore's presentation, she was bringing an engineering perspective. How can she account for ecosystem goods and services and engineering design? Mm -hmm. And when you listen to her speak uh, and then drag around not just the academic, but many communities, it really makes you think about why, why are we engineering things the way that we're doing? Why do we have concrete ditches uh, and empty retention ponds? We could be doing this ever design at lower cost and enjoy all these other side benefits from that and be functional. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of times I think it just comes down to I learned how to do this way right. and that works and I'm not really interested in learning any other way. Yeah. Uh, no, there, there's intransigence from, from patterns um, that we learn in school and at, at work. I, I, it, it reminds me of, of how we tried to implement sustainability at the city level. And that was the city contracts with many consultants uh, and agencies for services, um, from you know, buying toilet paper for the buildings to um, planning uh, for the urban area land use plan for 2030. And the, the key to getting change is asking for it in your scope of services. Um, if you want if you're going to design a new jail, not something everybody wants to pay for, but something the community needs, if you want a jail that is reliant on renewable energy and energy efficient, you have to ask for that in the scope of services you lay out for the architects that you're going, architects you're going to interview 
to design that building and the engineers who are going to evaluate the alternatives. You have to ask for those things in scope of services. That was a lesson I learned early on because when, once the, the contract's let, it's hard to add without adding cost. But if you write the scope of services to ask the questions that will help you get whatever it is, facility, program, plan, um, that reflects sustainability, you put it in the scope of services because um, that's where it can make a difference. Then somebody has to answer the question, yeah, I can evaluate um, the viability of solar photovoltaic panels for powering the jail um, that's going to house 120 uh, uh, inmates and 60 staff. But you don't, if you don't put that in the scope of services, you don't get the answers to those questions that enable you to say, yeah, it makes sense for us to spend a million dollars more on this building to have it be reliant on solar energy for electricity because that pays for it easily within the lifespan of the building. I mean, that's, that's the perspective you have to have. Um, you have to tie that to your budget for the building now. But for the long term, I mean, how often do we build a jail? About every 50 years in a county as we build about every 50 years. And nobody wants to spend lavish dollars on a jail Logically so, but there are, you know, in 120 inmates, there are 60 people that are going to work there. That's their work environment, and we should be concerned about the quality and support of that work environment to, so they can get their job done effectively. And because it's an ongoing cost, and it may cost, it may cost 40 million to build a jail, but annually you may spend 5 million in salary and staff to run that jail and operational costs. And if that building lasts 40 years, that's 200 million, okay? If we can save dollars in the way we operate that building, it has implications long term. And in, in terms of operational efficiency and heating, lighting, cooling, all that stuff, as well as um, functioning efficiency and, and how people supervise and, and how you design and build the environment so that they can supervise those, those inmates. So, it, it, you can do it. It takes asking hard questions uh, and, and trying to look long term. Uh, if, I, if I left you with anything today, it is how can I look long term in the realms of study and the realms of um, uh, employment and the realms of activity that I'm interested in. Beyond the fiscal year's budget. Yeah, beyond the fiscal year's budget. Uh, Goofy. Goofy stuff. Other questions, comments? Final questions for Bruce. Have you tried and reached out to Bruce's uh, student government at all uh, for their leadership and have you tried to reach out to the students? I, I personally have not um, because really it's. Uh, I don't have the opportunity nor the responsibility to engage with students, not doing classroom teaching, et cetera. Ben certainly was heavily engaged with student government and helped with the, I can't think of the fund now, but the Green, uh, green Projects Fund, something like that, I, I'm sorry, can't think of it. But So that's part of uh, what we need is someone that, a director of sustainability that can do that. Um, and Ben did that very effectively and, and worked with student government and student organizations. Um, because uh, faculty members can engage with students in academic advising and teaching, and then they may have responsibilities for student uh, organizations and student committees as liaisons. Um, but for the university to make progress overall in the kinds of goals I talked about and outcomes, we need full-time active involvement uh, of a director of sustainability to make those connections because then Someone like Ben knows that student government has this issue or this concern, and, but because he's visiting and meeting with the vice president for administration and, and facilities, he can tie those, make those connections. And that's what we talked about, the resources are needed to help make those connections so that operations at K-State can benefit from um, student activities, from research that's going on, et cetera. Good question. Well, there are no other questions. Thanks. I appreciate your attention today. Hope it was uh, mildly entertaining and informative. <laughs>